All right, this whole show has been sexual follies, but now it's time for sexual follies. I just, this is just something I've been thinking about over the weekend. I had to bring it up. Last week, I was reporting on the election of the transgender guy in Virginia, Danica Roman. While I was talking about it, I got to the pronoun thing, and I actually didn't know whether to call it him, him or her and all this stuff. And I, I noticed this survey. This survey was very slanted, but it finds that Democrats with a bachelor's degree or more education are more likely than other Democrats to say a person's gender can be different from the, quote, sex they were assigned at birth. In other words, different from the their sex. They actually are. Yeah, exactly. About three quarters, 77% of Democrats with a bachelor's degree or more say this compared with 60% of Democrats with some college and 50% of those with high school diploma or less. No such education divide exists among Republicans. And here's the thing that really got to me as I was, I was thinking about it and I suddenly got genuinely annoyed. A man who thinks he's a woman is by definition deluded. He is, in definition, believes something that is untrue. He is a man who thinks he's a woman. He doesn't become a woman even if he chops off his bits and has implants and all this stuff. He doesn't become a woman. He becomes somebody who's a man who's had this operation. I, I, I would be happy in talking to someone to call him whatever pronoun he pleased out of sheer civilized politeness, but I can't, I cannot simply abandon my sense of reality. And it brought to the, my mind the fact <coughs> that, that, that the sexual ethos the left has now created, and it's totally created by the left, but the sexual ethos they've created, all of it makes absolutely no sense. It, it, we are absolutely being asked to believe, you know, who was it, uh, the, uh, was it the queen in, the, in Alice in Wonderland who believed seven impossible things a day or something like that? That's what they're asking us to believe. They're asking us to believe there's no difference between men and women. All through history, there, you know, we've, that's been the main difference between people. Now we're not supposed to believe that. But you can be a woman in a man's body, even though there's no difference. Like, how would you know, since there's no difference between a woman and a man, how you would you know whether you were a woman or a man? You're supposed to, women are supposed to be the same as men, and yet men are supposed to stop behaving like men when women are around and start behaving the way women want them to behave, even though they're just the same and they're just as powerful. Women are the same as men. Women don't need any protection from men, but they need to be protected by men. Men should protect them because they shouldn't be chasing them around the room. I don't know why. I mean, if you go to the movies, the women punch men and the men go flying off, you know, off screen. Why didn't they do that when these guys, when Harvey Weinstein was attacked? Could it have something to do with the guy's body weight? It's like three times what the woman's is. And that makes a big, big difference. Uh, you know, the whole thing, and of course, you know, women don't have to take care of children, even though children obviously need women. Here's a story I just want to read from NPR, okay? This is about uh, a San Francisco 49er. It says, Marquise Goodwin plays in 49ers win. Afterwards, he says, we lost our little boy. This is NPR, right? A, totally. Just It's an anti-Trump, 24-hour, seven, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anti-Trump, left-wing station, NPR. The, the caption, which shows Marquise Goodwin falling to his knees after he scores a touchdown, it says San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Marquise Goodwin fell to his knees in the end zone after scoring a touchdown against the Giants on Sunday. He later revealed that he and his wife had endured a personal tragedy. And then the story says, it wasn't until after the San Francisco 49ers won their first game of the season Sunday that wide receiver Marquise Goodwin told fans that he and his wife Morgan Goodwin Snow had lost their baby son hours earlier due to premature labor. Due to pre they, she had a miscarriage. Goodwin posted the news online shortly after the game. He said, we lost our little boy, okay? <laughs> now, I, I understand. I think this is a tragedy. I think the guy's heart is broken. But how come, if that baby had been aborted, if that baby had been aborted, it wouldn't have been a tragedy. NPR wouldn't have reported it as a tragedy. They wouldn't have reported it at all. They wouldn't have reported it at all. It wouldn't have mattered. That life would have been snuffed out and they wouldn't have mattered. Everything, everything the left says about sex and gender makes no sense. And the idea that we're being asked to apologize when we contradict them, the idea that we're being asked to say the wrong pronoun for people, the idea that we're being asked to buy into the fantasies of people who don't know which gender they are, is just deeply deeply offensive. This involves no hatred of anybody. It certainly doesn't involve hatred of people who have some kind of body dysmorphia or people who want to live. People who want to live as women, men who want to live as women, go the hell ahead. What's it to me? You know, that has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with hatred. It has nothing to do with bigotry. But 
Intellectual dishonesty is just a road that leads off a cliff. The facts matter, the facts come back to haunt you, and if you're not making sense, shut up and think again. And this is the thing I just, it's just occurred to me that when I'm sitting around and I don't know what, what pronoun to use, okay, something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. I'm not going to eat this apple. I'm not going to bite into this world of nonsense that makes somehow makes the left feel better for whatever reason. I'm not going to do it. So that, that was just what I wanted to talk about, sexual follies. I got to say goodbye. Tomorrow is the mailbag. You got to get your questions in now. Click on the podcast, click on the Andrew Clavin Show, click on the mailbag, send in your questions. I will answer them all. Answers guaranteed 100% correct and will change your life sometimes for the better. I'm Andrew Clavin. This is The Andrew Clavin Show.